Get along, little doggies. Come on. <laughs> hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders. Branding irons. Branding in the Old West. Let's check it out. Last year, I was contacted by Brian Gonzalez from the Chisholm Trail Heritage Museum in Texas about helping them promote a contest where people would create and submit a brand of their own design. Everyone who submitted would have their design put on a mural at the museum, and the winner would have a branding iron handmade by a blacksmith with help from a bona fide Texas rancher. Turns out they were so happy with the submissions that the rancher made every contestant's brand, including the one thrown up as an example by the Scourge of Tucson. Yeah, that's, uh, that's me. No, don't start this. Well, I wasn't expecting that at all, and I'm very humbled by the gesture. Incidentally, they host an annual cowboy camp to teach young folks the ways of our famous American icon. Eric Russ, one of our subscribers, got his and sent me these pics. Well, I was anxious to get mine. However, the mail stage was attacked by Comanche Indians and I had to send Rex to Texas to retrieve it. Suffice to say, it took a few weeks. Oh, the power of Texas barbecue. Branding livestock dates back to at least 2700 BC. The Spanish brought the practice over to the Americas in the 16th century, and it has remained a staple of marking ownership on your stock ever since. And some of the very first individuals to bring brands to the Americas were actually churches. So most of us know that nowadays people give time and money to churches in what's known as a tithing. Well, back in the day, not everyone had a lot of money lying around, and sometimes you would give things like goods or cattle. And so a lot of these churches, especially the early missions that were established in Texas that had their own cattle herds, had so many cattle and they needed to mark their ownership, and so they had their own brands. Throughout the cattle drive era, it was hugely important to have your brand registered by the county clerk. Although Texas started doing this in 1848, other western states didn't get going on official registration until the 1870s. I'm Bill Blackwell, part of the board of the Chisholm Trail Heritage Museum. My family goes back to Dr. Clayton Blackwell, who first uh, registered his brand in DeWitt County in October of 1849. To the inexperienced, brands are not easy to read. They can be as simple as letters with symbols or as difficult as hieroglyphics. Experienced ranchers don't have a problem with the language, and most of them know the local brands by sight anyway. Well, let me throw you some basics that can help you with recognition. Here on the hypothetical Rogue Ranch, we need to make a brand that isn't easily confused with our neighbors at the Rapscallion Ranch. It can be simple like this, and we would be the Circle R. We can put a crescent below and make us the Rocking R. Or maybe flip that upside down and make us the Swinging R. Perhaps we have motion sickness so we can settle for the walking R. Or we have loftier goals as the flying R. Or it could just be we don't want to move at all as the lazy R. The technology is simple. A blacksmith forges the brand in iron. Later it is heated over a fire and quickly pressed into the hide of the animal to burn the skin. The hair will no longer grow back over the brand mark so it will remain visible. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't feel good. So I took the liberty of branding some non-living things just for the fun of it. Yeah, it, it's been good. For wrestlers, they would have a running iron, which was a branding iron in a simple shape like a lion or a crescent that they would use to alter an existing brand on stolen livestock. The McClory brothers near Tombstone got caught red-handed with one of these by the Earps. You can be sure the devil's to pay the minute that you say no. No! Yeah, the crew had stolen six mules from the military and changed the U.S. brand to DS. The brands made for us are historical reproductions of a road brand, which is a shorter iron brought on trail drives to brand any mavericks they picked up along the way. I made a cow! Today, branding is still done, and other methods include things like freeze branding, which is supposedly less painful and traumatizing to the animal. And the interesting thing about all of these brands is every one of them means something. And it's just like you as a kid, you're sitting there and you're taking a test, you're writing a letter to grandma or grandpa, you sign your name at the bottom of it, that's your brand. I want to thank Brian Gonzalez and the Chisholm Trail Heritage Museum for all their help with this video and for making a branding iron for us. 
You guys are truly keeping the Old West alive, and I hope to get out and see you soon. Put some barbecue aside for me, will you? <clears throat> well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. No. And there's one last individual I'd like to thank who this brand is going out to. This is for Mr. Santee with the Arizona Ghost Riders. He was nice enough to feature us early on to help get the word out about these brands.